Okay, uh, we have here, I didn't hear it turn on though. It's on. It's on, okay. We have here a list of polyatomic ions that you're going to have on your test on Monday. <clears throat> so we'll take you through it and it'll help you practice for how to name uh, ionic compounds. The important thing with naming ionic compounds is to <coughs> ensure that um, when you form the ionic compound that it's neutral. So for example, uh, in, uh, in this one here we have lead and bromine. Bromine we know, bromide is minus one. And if there are four bromides in this compound, that must mean that the counter ion, the cation, the lead cation has to have a plus four charge. So it's the higher of the two possibilities. Lead can take an oxidation state of plus two or plus four. So this is the higher one to counteract the negative four charge of the bromines. So it's plumbic bromide. The other ones are simply anions by themselves. So this is bisulfite, also known as hydrogen sulfite. This is chlorate. Uh, this series of ions is, um, has the full possible number of oxidation states for chlorine. So you can get ClO4, which is perchlorate, ClO2-, which is uh, chlorite, and ClO-, which is hypochlorite, like we see here in the iodite, uh, iodate series. Periodate, iodate, iodite, hypoiodite. We'll come back to that later. Uh, so anyway, let's go through this systematically. We have bisulfite, chlorate, hydride. Hydrogen uh, sometimes behaves like an anion, although very often, most often, it's seen as H+, the proton, they call it. Uh, but when it does, when it's coupled to metals, hydrogen will sometimes take a negative charge, so we call it hydride. Ammonium, plumbic bromide, cupric carbonate. How do we know it's cupric? Well, because carbonate is a polyatomic ion with a negative two charge. So that means for one copper atom to counterbalance that negative two charge, it's got to be plus two. So plus two is the higher charge possible uh, possibility uh, that carbon uh, that copper can take on. You have copper plus one is a plus one charge, whereas copper two has a plus two charge. This is the plus two copper, so it's called cupric carbonate, according to the old naming system. Um, phosphate has a negative three charge, therefore copper must be plus one if there are three copper atoms, so this is called cuprous phosphate. Permanganate has a negative one charge, and there are two permanganate anions, therefore the lead has to be plus two, so it's the lower charged uh, species. Plumbus permanganate is what we call that, according to the old system. Sulfide is minus two, it's the chalcogen. Chalcogens always take a minus two charge when they form an ion, and therefore this cobalt has to be plus two, so it's cobaltous sul sulfide. Two chlorine atoms with a negative charge, two chlorides means this tin has to be plus two, so stannous chloride, tin can take two charges, plus two or plus four. Stannous is plus two, stannic is plus four. Then we have sulfate combined with chromium, sulfate is negative two, therefore chromium has to be plus two, that's the lower of the two possibilities, so it's chromous sulfate. Likewise, manganese sulfite, sulfite is minus two, therefore the manganese has to be plus two. This is cyanate with a minus one charge, there are two cyanate and ions, therefore the iron has to be plus two, so it's the lower of the two possibilities, ferrous cyanate. Mercurious iodate, how do we get that? Um, iodate is minus one, there are two iodate anions, therefore this thing is minus two, it has to be counterbalanced by the plus two of the mercury, but there are two mercury atoms here providing a plus two charge, which means that each mercury atom is carrying a plus one charge, so we call it mercurous. Mercurous is the lower charge uh, mercury cation. Mercurious Mercurous iodate. This is the higher charge mercury, so it's mercuric because it's combined with two nitrates, which are minus one, but there's only one uh, mercury atom providing that plus two charge, so it's the higher charge possibility. Mercuric nitrate is what we call it. This is pyrophosphate, it's just an anion. Phosphide is minus three, therefore, this is chromium plus three, so we call it chromic phosphide. Sodium cyanide, peroxide, superoxide. The iodate series, periodate, iodate, iodite, hypoiodite. You notice the prefixes and the suffixes that are added. When it's the regular uh, one, we call it eight. One less oxygen, it's ite. Two less oxygens, it's hypoite. And when it's got one extra, it's per eight. So periodate, iodate, iodite, and hypoiodite. 
It's good to memorize that series because the, uh, uh, the chloride series, the series goes through the same sequence. You can get perchlorate, perchlorate, uh, perchlorate, chlorate, chlorite, and hypochlorite. We have here dichromate, which is minus two, and it's counterbalanced by two potassium ions, so it's potassium dichromate. This is the bicarbonate anion, also known as hydrogen carbonate. Here's perchlorate. Frequently confused anion is azide. See, this is three nitrogen atoms with a negative one charge. Not to be confused with nitride anion, which is one nitrogen atom with a negative three charge. So be aware of that distinction. If you replace the oxygen atom in cyanite with a sulfur, we call it now thiocyanate. This is nitrite, iodichloride, bromide, nitride, phosphide. This is tungsten carbide, sodium thiocyanate, potassium thiocyanate, barium sulfate. Sulfate is minus two, therefore the barium is plus two, and it's a group two metal, so we know it has to be plus two. Finally, cesium nitrate.